We've been thinking about the fundamental principles of biology, which as philosophers, that's what you do, and I'm trying to understand how that works. Um, the, you have pioneered the idea of models and confirmation of models. Uh, you've also talked about a, a kind of a broader evolutionary approach with holobionts. Um, what are holobionts? And how does that play into the confirmation of models? Well, uh, basically all human beings are holobionts under my understanding of the definition, which means that you take a multicellular organism and then you include all of its cooties, its, <laughs> its uh, bacteria, virus, parasites, fungi, all the little guys including in all of them living anywhere in or on the organism. And that all taken all together, that entire community is the holobion. And so, you know, cows in their famous stomach cooties, those mm. are, that's a holobion and we're holobionts. And it turns out if you take even the tiniest little multicellular organism, it has its own cooties. Oh. So <laughs> basically every single multicellular organism that we have ever found mm. has its own cooties mm. and they're holobionts. So everything that we found that we've ever been able to look at is a holobiont. It's so it's a, it's a different framework for thinking about about organisms. Yeah, it, it puts a, I, now I don't work in this subject at all. I find it rather repellent actually, but um, <laughs> because I can't do it. Um, the notion of individual, the, of, of a biological individual, it really messes that up. Oh. Uh, because um, you used to think you were an individual with your macro body, right? Yeah. But now you're an individual with all your little guys. Mm. Um, but are you? Oh, don't we have to count the little guys? Is that your individual now? I mean, then you're down the bunny trail. Let's not go there. Um, what happens in holobion? is that you've got a community level of organization that I claim is a unit of selection in the sense of not just an interactor, uh, but also it has parts that are reproducers for that interactor. Mm. And mm. it has parts sometimes that are manifestors. Mm. So the, the, these are areas of, of your units of selection, yes. which you've, you've pioneered these different areas, replicator, interactor, manifester, and then, and, and then you have yeah, a beneficiary. Yeah, these are my and new names, yeah. Your, these are your new names, and you see holo, the concept of a holobiont, which is the community of, of ourselves plus all our um, uh, uh, microbes, microbes, yeah. microbes that inhabit our gut, but all over our body. Uh, as a, a potential unit of selection as well that would express itself at some of these four areas that you've articulated. Yeah, and so that was my first paper I wrote on holobionts actually, was saying holobionts appear as all of these different kinds of uh, units. Uh, uh -huh. and, um, now, do you get a different result when you, when you look at a, an, a, an organism as a holobiont as opposed to just the organism, bef organism before you saw it? Um, well, yeah, you've got to model it differently. And I wanted to model the holobiont as an interactor more precisely. So mm -hmm. I went to Mike Wade, the legendary hierarchical modeler, multi-level modeler, and I, I asked him to help me model a holobiont for the first time and in genetical model. And um, so we published a genetical model of a holobiont um, using community genetics, which is a di uh, another multi-level mm -hmm. school of genetics that is in the evolutionary change school that mm -hmm. tracks evolutionary change over time, doesn't look for I emergent adaptations, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, and um, so we modeled it that way and it worked out really well and it turned out that um, you don't have to have this strict requirement that, you know, the holobiont has to have full vertical uh, inheritance in order to count as a real, hol uh, real holobiont. And, 
and, which are everyone else requires, strict vertical inheritance in order to be a reproducer. That's bullshit. Our model doesn't have that at all. And the, the goods have been in in the community genetics models for over 10 years, actually more like 20, that you don't need to have full vertical in, inheritance. All you have to do is have a, the tiniest bit of vertical inheritance and the organism and the system will evolve more vertical inheritance mm. over time. Mm. Um, so, but Is that unique to a whole of bio? Does it yes. point to, a, to, to a, 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 just an organism, an organism without it? Yes. Okay, because it has all of this community genetics? Yes. And because the, the, the genetics of the, of the, uh, of the uh, microorganisms will affect our overall yes. fitness? Yes. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. So what, but what everyone else requires, everyone who's modeled it, and you can look at all the models that are available, no, I trust, verbal I trust models you. and everybody. I trust you. Um, they all require vertical transmission. It's not necessary. Mm, mm. It's not. I, and so... Anyway, we argued that a while, uh, what, three years ago. Um, and um, so anyway, we've been um, poking around how to do that. But Wade ca it came to me when I was first approaching him on this and explaining to him what I wanted him to make in the model. And um, he said, you know, you gave your four-part analysis of units of selection, it, well, 30 years ago, and I can't believe that it applies to something that's totally brand new mm. and new level of organization in biology mm. that's a powerful system yeah that is that is great and that kind of stuck with me